there's a pond in the cemetery and I can hear the, the geese and the swans. Forgive them. She said forgive them. They're trespasses. Oh. Forgive them their trespasses. We've actually gotten that before in cemeteries and I, I kind of think that that might be locking into something residual. If you think of a prayer being said at a, a burial site. Megan and Johanna, we are at uh, Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, and since uh, we've made a habit of going to the burial place of Meriwether Lewis, we thought we would come and check out the burial place of his partner in exploring uh, Louisiana Purchase and traveling to the west, so General George Rogers Clark. Um, he had started an outpost that later grew into the city of Louisville. So he is buried here. He has a historical marker honoring him. And Megan's got the S-Box running. So we're going to see if we can communicate with anybody, whether it be General Clark or one of his family members or someone else. So this is Johanna and Megan. Is there anyone here who would like to communicate with us? While we wait, I'm just going to look at some of the other grave information. So we've got Kedmund, Captain Edmund Clark, General Jonathan Clark. So the Clark family has uh, has been very involved. And you see these placards here marking 1775. These are from the Daughters of the American Revolution. So they're the, the organization that put together these placards. And you can see someone's keeping up with getting a flag on here. Um, pretty interesting that much like Meriwether Lewis, General Clark in his later years was plagued by debts that he incurred um, in his exploration of the country. Um, patience. Megan heard patience. Lucas? Or Lewis. Or Lewis, okay. Uh, interesting enough, Meriwether Lewis is Meriwether Lewis Jr., so I'm assuming the son of Meriwether Lewis, but I don't know, is buried here. I don't know if there's actually any connection. Is there someone named Lucas or Lewis here who would like to communicate? I'm going to come take a look at this. That is quite a a stone monument. My name's Johanna, this is Megan. That a child's place, but I can understand what it said. I was just near the grave of a child. I didn't look at the information, but the little lamb on there tells me that these are the graves of children. Looks like there might be two children buried there. It's hard to read. Is there someone here who would like to communicate? 30 troops? 30 troops. Well, I'm going to come back over to the general and the captain then. It says 30 troops is the amount. Thirty troops is the amount. Is that uh are we speaking with maybe General Jonathan Clark or Captain Edmund Clark or General George Clark? Talking about troops.
there is also a national cemetery here, so there are soldiers who passed away in a variety of wars buried here. I can't see it from here. If there's someone here who would like to communicate with us, could you tell us your name? Searching? Are you playing a game? We were just kind of being led around before. You playing a game of hide and seek? You could tell me if I'm getting... I'm doing well, thank you very much. Could you tell me if I'm getting hot or cold, if I'm near you? Look at this beautiful statue. Hopefully Megan will talk about it. Behind, Megan said behind me. So Megan said behind me. Let's look at this statue. I think she just said here. Kate A. Clark, wife of W. H. Churchill. Let's go around to the side. Georgia? In memory of my beloved husband, William Henry Churchill, son of Samuel Churchill. Yeah. It's hard to see because the sun's right there. Megan thought she heard Georgia. Is that a, a name or are you telling us where you're from? There's a pond in the cemetery, and I can hear the, the geese and the swans. Forgive them. She said forgive them. Their trespasses. Oh, forgive them their trespasses. We've actually gotten that before in cemeteries, and I, I kind of think that that might be locking into something residual. If you think of a prayer being said at a, a burial site. We had that at um, an EVP that we captured or recorded at Mount Olivet in Nashville, Tennessee. Consider Biggs. Biggs. All right, she said consider Biggs. This is why when I walk around, I'm always reading the stones near me. Okay. Left here. Left here. <laughs> she said left here. And a, doubtful. Wait a minute. No, we just we just got here. Were they here? Andrew Biggs, born in 1828, died in 1889. Maria Biggs, born in 1830, married in 1856, and died in 1869. Oh, you were so young when you passed away, Maria. Hmm. I wonder, all of us. I wonder if they had any children. Megan just said all of us. Are together. That's nice. You're together with your husband and your uh, your children, if you had any. Let's see. So Susan Biggs. She said forgotten. Remind them. Okay. William Biggs. Remind them of us. So let me go back. So I've got, it looks like William and Susan may be their children because born in 1863 and 1859. Repeat. I didn't hear you. It is the 
said, um, Remind us of them, forgotten. And, yeah, then, and then it just said to her. To her. Okay. So Andrew Biggs and Maria Biggs. Yeah. Okay, Maria. You're not forgotten. You are still memorialized and remembered. People walk around this cemetery all the time coming to visit it and read your name. Got a statue of, I assume, Mary up there. And then the cherub and what looks like a harp. Maria, if you're still over. if you're still here, could you tell us about yourself? Where would you like me to come? Megan said come over. Am I facing the right direction? I really want to go to this stone right here. You can use that device. You're doing really, really good. You can manipulate that to give us some words and then, yeah. You, you speak to me. Okay. What's your name? I'm Johanna. This is my sister, Megan. Okay, it looks like it. Carlos is your name? It's like a... Like a, oh, is it a child riding on an angel? A it might be a child. You're a soldier? Is your name Carlos? Did Megan hear that right? Oh, I can't read it. I'm guessing this is the stone of a child because it looks like, uh, like a child riding an, on an angel maybe being carried. Oh, am I looking at the stone for Eugene Howard? Maybe February 1862 to August 1864. That would have been a child. I can't really... Yeah. Yes? Okay, Megan said yes. Hello, Eugene. See, I'll come a little closer to this. First, I was like, is it a mermaid? But no. So you can see here it is a child, kind of on the back of an angel. Eugene, are you. Right. Two. Sister. You have a sister here? I was going to ask if he's alone or if he's with his family. So that's Eugene. Hmm. Daniel Howard was born in England. His wife, Mary. Oh, they also had another son. Ted. Danny Howard, 1870, so it could be Eugene or Danny. Ten years. So she said ten years. And he would have been right around ten years old, because he was born in 1859, died in 1970, so he would have been eleven. Help us. Danny, is that you? You would have been 11. So I wonder if one of these is for Eugene and one of these is for Danny. Maybe. Danny and Eugene, are you guys together? So Eugene, Megan thought she had a sister. Those are brothers. We're still We're still listening. I'm just walking around. Yes. 
walk the path? Do you mean the the grassy path over there, or do you mean the the drive, the concrete? Spirits are like, stop walking on the grass. Don't overlook. This is Mary. I don't see Mary's last name, though. Don't overlook the cavalry. Megan got soldier before. And like I said, there is a national cemetery here. Suzanne. Suzanne. Suzanne, is your resting place near us? Dakotas. I'm going to go back towards Clark. Uh, there's monuments to Clark all over the place with Lewis and Clark traveling out to the west coast. Uh, Pompey's Pillar. Is that in the Dakotas? Oh, I don't remember. I know they went to the Dakotas. Pompey's Pillar was in maybe in the Dakotas. Thirty troops before could have been I don't know how many people were with Lewis and Clark when they set out. Yes, you're looking. Am I looking in the right direction? I'm back to looking at I'm back to looking at General Clark, is that you? Or is it someone else? You can see the American flags over there. We're back by General Clark. Look. Where Emma. we? Emma? Behind. Standing. <laughs> so I said I was looking in the right direction and then said, look, Emma behind standing. Eddie. I'm going to come over here. Angel, okay. So I've got a standing statue here. I think Megan just said left. This is Churchill again. But I don't remember there being an Emma. Come. Read us. Okay, I will come read your stone if you Tell me which way to go. This one has... I was over here before. Oh! Emma. Emma E. Collins, daughter of John and Elizabeth Ziegler, born June 18, 1854, died March 6, 1887. Megan just said yes. The storm that sweeps the wintry sky no more disturbs her sweet repose than summer evening's latest sigh Good. that shuts the rose. Correct. Okay, Emma, we found you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, you're welcome. And then this stone here matches the beautiful, absolutely beautiful pink granite that you have here. I had gotten Eddie before, too. Eddie Sewell, son of J.K. and Sarah Seaman, born 1880, died 1892, so 12. Okay. I'm going to continue around here, Emma. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. I saith the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Just continuing around. Oh, this is harder because the sun's not really helping me. It's easier in my camera, kind of. There was a ship. There was a ship. Megan said there was a ship. There, are you talking about in life you were on a ship, or are you trying to direct us to another stone?
headstone. You, you're all doing really, really remarkable at, at giving us clues to come find you. I'm looking now to see if I can see anything with like a nautical theme to it or a ship. I'm not seeing any anchors. You see anchors a lot in cemeteries and broken chains. Uh, but then again, too, there was a ship. It could just bring me right back over to the Clarks and all their adventuring. You said there was a ship. Could you give me another clue? On how to find you? Please don't give up on us. Here's another one that kind of repeats the, the idea of blessed are the dead for their works you follow after them. Who is this one? My sneaker is making so much noise. Okay. So. This is. Over here. Or it's connected to this one. I know I read that before. That was Churchill. Go oh. down there. Last. Go down there. Are you talking about down this hill? Oh, is that an anchor? No, that's not an anchor. There's a cross in front of me on a log. I thought the one straight in front of me was an anchor. Sprat? <laughs> I know you told me there was an anchor, but left. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go left in this section because you said down the hill. And you said there was an anchor. Oh my lord. Sprat. I see you, Sprat. I'm trying to motion to Megan to stay with me or else I won't hear her. Sprat, you're you're in a tree now. Oh, it did tell me to do the path before, didn't it? Okay. I think she just said, you hear us or you're near us. All right. So there we have Sprat. In memory of Colonel, maybe? W.M. Sprat, born 1782, died 1870. A soldier of 1812. I found you. Sacred to the memory of Grandison Sprat. Grandison Sprat, born November 4th, 1813, died June 28th, 1880. Okay, there's a lot of maintenance vehicles coming by right now. Sacred to the memory of Mary J. Spratt, wife of Grandison Spratt, daughter of Judge S.S. S. Nicholas, 
Born April 22nd, 1830, died May 8th, 1888. I still don't have the connection to an anchor. He was a soldier in 1812. Hello. Hello, I'm Johanna, this is Megan. Is this a member of the Spratt family talking to us? Michael? Michael, what's your last name? I feel like it's pretty interesting that like one spirit just directs us to where their stone is and then like the next one takes over. Michael, am I near where you are? Justice. Justice. <laughs> Getting clues again. Were you a judge, Michael? Are you telling me about your profession? My uncle was a judge. His name was Michael. She said, visiting us, Frank. I am near Frank. Frank Stetson, she just said up there. Frank Stetson Walker, U.S. Army, World War II, 18, 1908, sorry Frank, 1978. Is that the Frank that just came through? I still don't see an anchor. I didn't forget about the anchor. Cannot reach. I'm going to come back to Meg. Thank you for communicating with us back. I said I came back to Meg. Back by the Spratt family. Is there someone else who would like to communicate and try and have us find your resting place? I saw Frank over there. Can you tell me your name and I'll try and find you? Megan said she said, so I guess we maybe had a female voice. A beautiful day for walking around. Windy. Windy? I honestly think a little bit more wind would be appreciated. It's kind of still. Is that still you, Mary? Mary Spratt? Yes. Okay. Mary, can you tell us about yourself? 
I see you were married to Grandison Spratt, daughter of Judge. Yeah, we had justice before. Daughter of Judge Nichols. Could you tell us about yourself? It's my tree. It's your tree. You you are in it. Yes. You're nice and protected by the shade of the tree. It's kind of, it's almost like its branches are hugging. Let me move back so you guys can see better. You can see the way the branches come out, almost like they're hugging Mary's monument here. You feel at peace here? Do you enjoy uh, when people come and visit you? Walking the path or people might jog through or stop and speak with you like we are? Yes, I do. Thank you very much for communicating with us. Fun. <laughs> Passing. Do the visitors. visitors, do the people walking by ever stop and take a break and get some shade under your tree? Megan might have just gotten attacked by a mosquito. Megan? Yeah. The stop and rest. Maybe lean against your tree. Or the squirrels and birds come run up your tree, land in it. Climb? Yep, she said climb. Look at the sap coming down from that tree. Pine cones falling all around you. It's a pine tree, so even in the winter you'll have pine needles around you. It's like a weeping pine, though. Kind of strange. Very pretty. Oh. All right, goodbye, Mary. Thank you for speaking with us. I like when the spirits just decide they're done. All right, I'm gonna cut off this video as Mary said goodbye. Goodbye.